Cause I'm the data guy, making bytes fly high, diving deep into the data, reaching for the sky, from ETLs to data lakes and pipelines that don't break. Tune in, hang on, and let's make data great. Cause I'm hey the data, data guy, guy making bites fly high, diving deep boy. into the data, reaching for the sky, from ETLs to really data lakes and pipelines that don't break. So Tune in, video, hang I'm on, and through, let's right? make data great. Running Airflow on your local machine, some basic just, you know, ways of how you're gonna get around the UI, where to put things, how to write your first DAG, um, and just kind of take it from, you know, perspective of, hey, you don't know any Airflow, how can you get started writing effective Airflow code? Um, and so without further ado, what we're gonna start with is just, you know, actually installing and running Airflow. Then once we're up and running, I'll walk you through, you know, how you'll write your first DAG, what a DAG structure looks like, and how to manage the Airflow UI. Uh, so let's get into it. So to run Airflow locally without kind of mussing around with the different ports, because Airflow is a web server, scheduler, workers, and trigger, as well as a backend database. And if you're starting running Airflow from scratch, you're gonna have to set up the port forwarding, set up all those different services separately. With the Astro CLI, you just run one command and you spin up an Airflow stack. Um, so the first thing you'll need to do, obviously, is actually install the Astro CLI. So brew install Astro. Um, I already have it installed, um, but you'll see I'm just gonna update it, make sure I'm on the latest version, uh, and you can see I am, so we're all good to go. Um, and then you'll also need to either have Docker Desktop or Podman installed, because that's what Astro uses to actually spin up Airflow. So I'll be running through it using Docker Desktop, but the setup process is exactly the same. The only difference is just what engine it's actually using under the hood, and that's just setting a config file. So if you like Docker Desktop and you can uh, have a license, use that. If you don't, use Podman. Um, and I have a separate video on how to use Podman as well. Um, and if you're using Docker Desktop, all you have to do is just have it installed and the Astro CLI will use it by default. So there's no additional setup needed there either. So after we've got the Astro CLI installed, we're going to want to actually create a directory. So to store Airflow environment in because an Airflow project is really just a collection of folders and files describing you know, the actual configuration details for that Airflow project. So to do that, um, first I'm gonna go into my desktop, so CD and desktop, and then I'm gonna type in make directory newbie airflow. Um, and then I'll CD into that, so newbie airflow. And then once I'm in my new directory, what I'll write is astro dev init. And what this will do, if I type in ls, will generate all the folders uh, that I need to actually run airflow locally. So you see I have my Docker file, readme, airflow settings, packages, requirements, um, DAGs folder. And what I'll do now to make it a little bit easier, so we're not just running around in terminal, is actually just opening that folder. So going into desktop, opening up newbie airflow, and boom, now I have my airflow directory open. So within this airflow directory, your DAGs are, as you might've guessed, will go in your DAG folder. So you have your example uh, advanced and basic DAG within here. And these are just kind of some basic DAGs that are defining, I think, weekday activities, what people are doing on the weekdays, um, and then this is just showing a basic uh, ETL workflow. Um, so then the kind of most important things you're gonna need to look at are, number one, your Airflow settings YAML. So if you wanna add any extra details, hard code them, you can add them here. Your Docker file, this is where you're gonna set your Airflow version. So ask for runtime and then a version number here. And you can look up online that kind of what open source uh, Airflow version each of these correspond to. Right now I'm running on 2.7, so 9.1 and the Astro runtime. I also have my packages for any system level packages. And these are non-Python packages. So if you're installing like MS SQL drivers, they would go in this packages uh, department here. And then you can also install things onto your, to your Docker file. Um, so let's say, you know, when I wanted to start this environment up, I wanted to create a, a Python virtual environment. Uh, I can add that and then on startup, it will provision a Python virtual environment. And so this is good if you need to provision additional services, maybe like some attached storage as part of your setup process. Uh, then in the requirements uh, te text here, this is where you will bring in things like, you know, your Snowflake uh, provider um, or any other Python packages that you'll be using within your DAGs. Um, so this is what it looks like with empty. Um, and this is where, you know, hey, you add all of your requirements, everything into this. And then once you have your environment set up and ready, then what we'll do is actually start up our Airflow environment. So right now, all we have is just the file directories and the folder structure we need to start an Airflow environment but we haven't actually started anything. So what we'll need to do to actually start it is just open our terminal window again, make sure we're in our folder. So you can see I'm in newbie airflow, and then we're gonna type in astro dev start. 
that here down start and boom you will see this start to build our docker image here um, it's going to filter to this build everything install any packages any requirements anything we added in that docker file and then start up a local airflow environment and so in a second it'll flash me the credentials i need to actually access that so here we have our connection details. So by default, it's gonna open up your web server at localhost 8080 with the credentials admin admin down here. So if we go over to our web browser and type in localhost 8080 up at the top, uh, sorry, not that, we will type in admin admin here. As you can see, I've run a couple airflow environments, so it's actually auto-filled for me. Type in auto auto, and we can see our example DAG advanced and basic. And so what we'll do is so, to actually start running a DAG, if you unpause it and it has a schedule like here at daily, it will immediately start running because it's auto triggered. Um, but you can also manually trigger your DAGs just by hitting the trigger DAG button here. Uh, additionally, if you want to trigger a DAG, you know, let's say with um, some configuration details. So if I click on um, click on a DAG and then click trigger DAG, oh, it doesn't even have to. Never mind. So you can't actually unless you parameterize it. Um, so here you have owners, so you can fill, you know, choose, see who's actually running the DAG. You can filter by schedule. So this is how often it's going to run. And it can tell you at, you know, uh, midnight, it's going to run daily. See its last DAG run. So if I click on that, I can see the last time that this DAG was actually run. And here within the DAG screen, now you have the grid view, which is the view over here where I can look at all the different DAG runs. I can see how long each DAG run took to actually execute. I can look at which of the individual tasks were successful, which ones were skipped. Um, and then if I click into individual tasks here within the graph view, well, number one, I can see the relationship between other tasks. But if I then go into the details screen, I can find out some of the details around the task. So if I hit render template, if there was any uh, code passed into this, you would see it here. Or if it ran SQL code, it would render that SQL code here. You can also see all the different details around the configuration of this task here. Um, you can see the log file. If you click log and see, hey, what happened within this, you can see it's actually skipping this weekend task following that branch. Um, and you can also see XCOMs. So you can see, hey, this is a value that it's actually returning. So skip mix and key, followed weekday, and the return value is weekday as well. So this is, you can see the task outputs. Um, and so this is how, this is typically the screen you'll be in to monitor your DAGs. Um, you know, obviously this is where everything lives. You can also check the code here. Um, look at you know the actual code underlying a DAG. Make sure that it's running the most recent version of your DAG. So sometimes a mistake I commonly make is I don't save my uh, DAG code after I made some edits, and then I'll run it again. And I'll be like, what? What the hell? Why am I getting the exact same error? Uh, and so going to check the code within the screen uh, will let me know, hey, this is the actual code that was run here. Um, Additionally, you can see the Gantt charts. You can see which tasks are taking the longest, which are taking the shortest. Uh, so if you want to break it down, not just on a macro level of how long your DAG is taking, but how long each of your tasks are taking, this is a great way to look at that. Um, and then another thing that's really important to know about here are the different ways you can set variables and connections here. So if I want to set a variable within Airflow, all I'll do is have a key value. So you know, let's say username, password is my uh, secret, and then I can save it. Um, you can see I have that value there. If you want to make this a secret, um, you can, is encrypted true? So it actually is encrypted, um, but because I'm authenticated, it will show it to me. We also have our connection details here, and this is where you'll set connections to any kind of database. So here, you know, if I want to create a Postgres database, um, you can connect to the backend Airflow database um, by just using Postgres, uh, host Postgres, schema nothing, Postgres, Postgres 5432. And this gives, just allows you to write to the Airflow backend database. So if you don't want to spend up on their database, just want to do some super lightweight testing, it's a good way to do it. Uh, it's definitely not best practices. You're not going to want to do it in production. But if we're just playing around locally, it's just very convenient. Um, and then additionally here, you can look at XCOMs on a global level. So look at all the information that's being exchanged between tasks. Um, if you want to check that plugins were installed correctly, you can see that here. So you have the actual runtime and you'll see all the different plugins that are installed within uh, Airflow here. And then finally you have, uh, or not finally, but here you also have some DAG runs. So if you want to look at all of your historical DAG runs, maybe filter for certain run IDs, uh, manage them at scale, kill all of them, whatever. This is a good way to manage them in, in macro. Um, and you also have audit logs here for, you can see every 
action that was taken. So you can actually see, hey, I just created a uh, connection within the UI. Um, I it will tell you exactly what every user is doing. So if you're trying to monitor your Airflow instance or see, hey, what did I do previously, uh, you can do that here. Um, additionally, now you have, also have cluster activity. So if you want to look at, you know, hey, the health of your Airflow environment, you can go in here. It's pretty basic, but pretty helpful as well. And you also have the data sets view. Um, and this is a little more advanced, but if you're passing data between DAGs, you can see it there. And then finally, let's see, do we have, oh yeah, I don't, DAG dependencies. So this is also where if you have different DAGs that correspond with each other, uh, you'll be able to see the connections between them. Again, I don't have them available here. Um, so some other housekeeping things. A lot of times what you'll want to do is, hey, I only want to test this end task or I only want to test a certain task. You can actually clear tasks. And so instead of me having to run the whole pipeline, what this will do is just run that task um, as if it were part of the pipeline. So now um, I can, if it goes complete, um, and then I want to clear upstream. So I'm going to clear all tasks and it's going to actually rerun. Um, and you can see all of the shortcuts for this. So if you want to clear certain DAGs, certain tasks, um, you can do that all here. And we'll also turn on auto refresh, which is not letting me either. There we go. Okay, cool. So now we have auto refresh and so this will allow you to just keep re-triggering DAGs um, without having to re-trigger the whole thing. And I think that is all I have for kind of getting started um, on your own with Airflow. Um, if actually, you know what, let's take it back. Let's also look at a DAG structure. So building a DAG. So I figured to kind of just walk through the DAG, I will just show you, you know, what's happening in this first example basic DAG, just to kind of give you an outline of, hey, you know, this is how I can approach my DAGs um, down the line. So the first thing you're going to have in any da DAG is, you know, your Airflow Decorate, your basic packages you're going to have to import. So you're going to have to import uh, Airflow Decorators for DAG and tasks. You can also just import the DAG and task object, but Decorators are way easier to use with because they allow you to use the Tesla API and it's just less boilerplate code. Uh, you can see here I'm also importing JSON and Pendulum date time. And so now within the, each DAG, um, you're going to have the DAG object. So it's going to look at DAG, then it's, you're going to have a series of parameters. So you have schedule, uh, start date, your catch up, retry. So how many times if a task fails, it's going to retry itself to try and be successful. Um, and then any tags you want to set for it. And tags are purely just a visual kind of way to organize your DAGs within the UI. Then once you've declared your t DAG with this defined example DAG basic, you'll then define your tasks. And so you can either define your tasks as Python functions outside of it and initialize them as tasks within the DAG or write them within the DAG code. It's purely uh, up to your preference. So here we have our first task, which is just a Python task. Um, and so it's using the Python task decorator where all we're doing is taking a data string and then loading it um, into a JSON file. So basically just simulating, you know, hey, I've received a JSON package from an API endpoint. Now I want to do some transformations on it. Um, so this is our extraction task. It's returning this. And when you return information from a task, it gets passed out as that XCOM that I was talking about earlier. So someone, a downstream task, can reference the output of this task and receive that JSON data dictionary. So then in our next task, which is transform, you we're going to take this dictionary and then unroll it into separate XCOM values. So you can see here we have multiple outputs. And so what this means is that we're going to take in the collection of order data and we're actually gonna make multiple returns. Um, so here we have total order value equals zero. And then for every value within that dictionary, we are going to add it to this total order value. So literally just cycling through the dictionary, adding them all up together, and then returning it as total order value. Um, and so all this is, is saying, hey, uh, if, so multiple outputs, instead of neat saying, hey, if there's a dictionary, if there's multiple input, if there's a big dictionary coming in, this is actually going to unroll it and bring it separated into multiple XCOM values that I can then reference by hitting dot values. So it'll just iterate through all the values returned in the XCOMs from our uh, extract task and then read them in to our transform task. So then we're, again, we're going to turn that total order value. So we've transformed it and done some very basic transformations. And now we are going to load it. So here, imagine we are saving this to a database instead of just printing it out. So here we're taking in that total order value and then we are printing that uh, out into our log file. So could be saving this to a database, but this is just a purely uh, example exercise. 
And then what I want to show you down here is actually how the tasks are defined. So even though you define it up there, you also have to initialize each task instance. So here I have my extract task, which I'm initializing as order data. And the reason I'm doing this is that then I can reference the output of the extract uh, function as order data. So here I'm passing that output, which is that dictionary of numbers, as a value into my transform task. So this is how I'm getting this order diction data dictionary into the transform task, then unrolling it and adding up all those values. Then after that, you can see I actually can nest it again, where I'm going to then load the value of total order value from order summary. So if you want to reference a specific um, value that you're returning, maybe you're returning multiple XCOM values, you can reference it by its key. So that key you set is total order value. Um, and here you can see we're returning it as a key value pairing as well up here. So here I'm loading it and again, referencing it as instead of just the uh, function, I'm saying I want a specific value from the output of that function. And then you'll notice we also don't have to set the relationships between them other than this because it'll automatically know, hey, if they're consuming data from each other, then they are probably linked. And so we'll develop those linkages within the Airflow UI. So now I'll kick it back to the Airflow UI and just kind of walk you through uh, what this looks like there. So within the Airflow UI, here we have uh, example DAG basics. I've already run it, obviously. And so here we can see we have extract, um, which is if we go into our XCOM template, uh, is returning those values of that data dictionary that we created. So this is passing it uh, as an output of the extract task. Then within the transform task here, you can see, I can go again to my XCOMs, and I can see the total order value is the return value of all of those uh, aspects of the dictionary added up. And then I can also see the render template. So here, this is showing me all the different values that are passed into this as an XCOM, so the values that I'm actually using. And so this is really great for troubleshooting if you want to make sure data is being passed properly between tasks. You can go and check in the render template and the XCOMs. Then in our load task as well, to look at the output, you can see here in the um, logs file that it will, if we um, print here under info, the total order value is 1236.70. So again, another way, great way where you can check uh, I do it a lot where I'll have a print statement in a task to make sure, hey, is this proper value being created um, before I upload it or before I bring it anywhere else. Um, so now I'm actually done. I think that's everything that you really need to know to get started with your own Airflow DAGs. Um, if you want to start, and so extending it past just you know basic Python functions, if you want to get started using different providers, I'd really recommend checking out the Astronomer Registry. There are a ton of different providers on here that you can use just kind of out of the box. So let's say you know I want to connect into um, an S3 database. There's not only you know examples of how to do that with full code here that you can download and then use immediately within your DAG. If I move over here, you can see. Um, but you can also just see, hey, you know how do I connect to Snowflake? Um, so here at S3 is Snowflake operator, where now I can see it on GitHub. You know I can look at the references of how to use it, um, and I can also see you know hey I need to have this table. I need to have and also example DAGs of how to actually use um, these different uh, operators. So operators are basically how predefined ways for you to interact with different services. So you can see here we have our S3 copy object operator. And this is instead of you know me having to write the Python logic to copy something between S3 buckets, uh, it's already been written. And then I just have to plug in where my S3 buckets are and have it do the rest. Um, so great functionality. Uh, just you know, for extending into use cases that you don't want to actually build out the whole backend yourself, you know, you live on the backs of others or whatever that terminology is. Um, and so I think that is truly all I have for you today. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you're interested in going further with Airflow, go all to this channel. I have tons of different example DAGs um, that you can use. Um, and without further ado, data guy out. See you tomorrow.